welcome to Rock Book Show, and I'm thrilled to have with me today Bruce Pollock. Bruce, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, thank you very much. And we are actually here at Beatles Fan Fest in Secaucus, New Jersey, the lovely Secaucus, New Jersey. Great way to spend a Saturday afternoon. And Bruce has written this fantastic book called, it's part of a series, actually, the If You Like series from Backbeat Books. If you like the Beatles, you will also like over 200 oddities, musicians, um, films. It's, it's a phenomenal collection. How did you become involved in the project, Bruce? Well, I, I have to thank the folks at Backbeat Books for coming up with the idea. I was uh, pitching them on something else, and they said, well, that's very similar to something we're thinking of. Would you be interested? So as a writer, you never turn anything down. <laughs> I said, oh, I definitely could do that. And I was happy they gave me the Beatles because uh, there's a wealth of information uh, that uh, you can tap into. So if you like the Beatles, you, you, you look, there's a million different things you could, you could uh, different avenues you can go down. Yeah, and it's very cool the way that you put the book together as well. Tell us about the structure of the book. Well, the, the first part of it is everything that influenced the Beatles. It's kind of the building blocks of their career. And, you know, get into their, their songwriting, the R&B, rockabilly. And then it goes into how the Beatles were influenced by the atmosphere they came up in and the atmosphere that they, in America, and, and Bob Dylan. And, and then it goes into the Beatles' influence mm -hmm. and how, uh, you know, bands try to sound like them and Beatlemania and the solo careers and everything like that. Yeah, and what's nice too is in, you don't imply in any way that the music business is over and nobody is any good anymore since the Beatles. There's really been a, a lot of great bands since and continue to be. Yeah, I think uh, in the Beatles were part of a change that is still going on, mm -hmm. but you know their influence. You know, people people take the Beatles and mix it with something else, and uh, you know I, I have this group, the, the Smithereens. I said they were influenced by the Beatles if the Beatles grew up listening to Led Zeppelin. Right. So, you know, it's like a pieces of a uh, recipe that the Beatles are like the essential uh, ingredient, and then you throw in all these other influences, too. And the state of New Jersey thanks you for mentioning the Smithereens, homegrown, hometown favorites. Um, you mentioned Bob Dylan. I'm glad you did, because I wanted to ask you about that. It was a great chapter in the book. Um, Dylan influenced Beatles back and forth, really. But one of the quotes you mentioned, too, was Dylan, Dylan introduced them to pot, but Elvis only gave them a peanut butter and banana sandwich. <laughs> I was taking a few liberties, possibly. <laughs> um, this is what I imagine happened. That he might have given them a uh, more of a choice <laughs> in the uh, in the buffet. <laughs> Maybe fried. But talk more about that. How Dylan and the Beatles um, really cross pollinated each other. They they were really the two strains of music fan growing up. It's like in the in the middle '60s, generally you were either a Beatle fan or a Dylan fan, and they did, didn't have too much use for each other. Especially if you're a Dylan fan, the Beatles were just rock and roll. Maybe they wrote a couple of good songs, but that was it. But Dylan started hearing them, and he, he found a way. He says, you know, I, I should incorporate some of this to expand my audience. And the Beatles, at the same time, were trying to uh, kind of grow up and, and get a more of a college audience. And so they, they, their needs meshed with each other, and then they eventually met each other a few times. And uh, the, the play that they had on each other is what resulted in the rest of the 60s, which was an incredible period of music. You mentioned in the book, though, uh, some of the more modern bands, Arcade Fire, Vampire Weekend, MGMT. Who do you see as, like, the keeper of the flame, or even who maybe is the next um, genesis of what's to come? Well, I think the Beatles, when they came in, so many things were in place, or so many things were, like, in the right place at the right time, that I don't see any, any band could ever really be uh, I mean, a lot of bands keep the flame, like, you know, Cheap Trick and ELO and uh, Smithereens and, you know, but they're not going to be like, have any kind of impact in far, as far as changing music the way the Beatles did because music was so ripe for it. Now music is all over the place. Everybody does a little bit of everything. You know, I thought for a while uh, the Shins were like a defining band and, you know, the Garden State soundtrack was like, and the Reality Bites soundtrack were my two defining soundtrack movies of the last 20 years or so. And, uh, you know, but then they broke up, and now they have a new album out, and it doesn't seem to have the same sound. And, uh, you know, people are breaking up. It's, it's just a, a chaotic, uh, splintered kind of thing. Uh, actually, you know, when I would talk to my daughter, we were, we, she would argue that, uh, well, maybe NSYNC is the, uh, the next Beatles. 
We started out as a boy band. What if they, I said, well, in order for NSYNC to be the next Beatles, they would then have to like take some amazing leaps of songwriting and, and like have like some, you know, every song on their album would have to be a gem that would be covered by a hundred people and they'd have to do that for seven years. When you mentioned the songwriting, that was actually one of the first things that the Beatles did as well. The songs were coming from inside the band. And that was a big change in, in the way bands operated. And it also points to the Beatles as a group that was in two eras because they appreciated the Tin Pan Alley songwriters of the 50s and 40s and the heyday of the Brill Building and people who wrote songs for a living. They appreciated that and, and originally that was, uh, you know, that was kind of their motivation. They said, well, if we could just make a living selling songs, that would be great. So they had that and then they had the group on top of it. So they created a template for every other group to come in and write their own songs. Nobody wrote songs as, as well as the Beatles did and, and songs that people could cover the way the Beatles songs were covered. But the Beatles had that tradition and they passed it along. Well, this is the book, If You Like the Beatles. Here are over 200 bands, films, records, and other oddities that you will like. It's a great jumping off point. And I really love too, Bruce, that it's, it's something not just for fans, but non-fans can learn something as well. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, it's a history of rock and roll through the prism of the Beatles. <laughs> Fantastic book. Thanks so much for being here, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you.